I want to thank my sponsor, Card Kingdom, for this War of the Spark rank draft that we're about to head into. You can go to cardkingdom.com and go to, to the affiliate link down below to get to cardkingdom.com even better and see all of the stuff they have to offer, whether it's singles, unopened product, you want booster boxes, individual uh, booster packs, you want supplies, you want to sell some stuff, you need, you need some cash, you want some trade-in, <clears throat> they've got all that covered. They are among the most competitive prices on the industry, both buy and sell. And as someone dabbling in the secondary market, they are my uh, signpost for a lot of things. I, I, I use them as a reference point all the time. So please incorporate Card Kingdom into your magic shopping comparisons, and I think you'll be pleased if you, if you do that. All right. Dive in. So uh, Zazda asks, just out of curiosity, why do people prefer best of one? Is it because it's faster? Uh, you get uh, sometimes it's nice to not have to sideboard and just you know move on to the next match, and uh, so I think that's totally fair. Um, it, yeah, I think it's kind of pace of play and length of commitment. You can knock out a best of one game pretty quickly. It is more gem efficient uh, as well, depending on your win percentage and everything. Oh, I, th I thought I turned that off. Thank you. I turned it off on a different screen, I think. Let's cover that. Appreciate that. And then we'll get into our draft view as well. Hide out here in the corner. All right. Yeah, let's get on to this draft. We've got Tybalt and Flux Channeler, both very appealing. But we've got this rare that not only produces some gems, but is quite playable and quite good if you can hold your life total. Yeah, I'm both sponsored by uh, Card Kingdom and Wizards. It's, they can, they can co-sponsor me this week, I think. No, no problem with that. Sideboarding adds more strategy, but it's a little, little overrated in terms of exactly how much. I mean, I don't know. I, it, not, not nothing, of course, but I'm not such a purist that I uh, like. I'm just anti best of one or whatever. I think it's uh, it's fun to bang, 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 knock them out. Anyway, we're gonna absolutely take the command the dread horde here. See if we can make it work, and if not, uh, happily take the gems. Follow with a bleeding edge. It's actually not that great. We just take a blast zone instead. Also a playable, uh, playable rare. Um, bleeding edge is in some ways an, a a uh, just like the two damage spell. It just doesn't get as many things as you would like. Uh, it does a lot more for an extra mana. You know, uh, you amass two. But hey, X four. How goes? You can take Nahiri, but no, I don't. I don't like Nahiri. If we're gonna take removal, let's just take one that matches our first pick. I kind of just want to take the gems, actually, but we'll take Bleeding Edge. It goes. It goes with the the rare we took there. Uh, we can take Toll or Globe. I'm not into Dovin, but the Skydiver is interesting because if we do get uh, green, it does support both. Accelerating to the horde and fixing for things like Skydiver. Doing great, Roland. Thank you. So I think we take the Skydiver here. Just a very powerful card as well. Here's a globe. A snare spinner to continue down black green. Um, I don't see us abandoning these, but we, we might. I mean, we could end up but not for like Spellkeeper. I'm just looking to see if there's anything that gets us off our path here and nothing here in uh, these other colors suggests to me. No, I don't have any uh, spoilers. I guess they don't love me that much yet, uh, Eddie. Also, I have not looked at any of the Chandra's. I, I know zero of the cards from M20, by the way. I just have not been looking at that at all. I think I don't want to take the weird here. 
I think we take the globe or the... Actually, I think the snare spinner is fine. Honor is mildly synergistic. Yeah, because you can discard stuff, but I don't want to go into red for honor here. I think it's globe or um, just the safe and sane snare, sp snare spinner. I'm going to go with snare spinner. We want to just survive until we do a big command. Everybody seems to like the globe. Maybe we'll wheel the snare spinner. All right, fine. I'll take the globe because we might. I think we might wheel the snare spinner. We might wheel the other one. Soren's thirst is what I was talking about. Uh, bleeding edge and Soren's thirst are, are pretty similar, really. This bleeding edge gives you a lot of value for that extra one mana, but they still ultimately tend to deal with the same level of creature threat. But I don't see what we take here if not. A Soren's Thirst. I don't think we take this or this. Maybe we could take a Primordial Worm. Yeah, I liked the spinner. I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake to be talked out of the spinner. I think this is the... If we're trying to get to command, the Dread Horde spinners are excellent for early defense. I guess I'll take a Thirst. We want better sixes than this. I don't love the Thirst, but... I'm kind of forcing our way towards the Dread Horde here, but maybe I shouldn't be. It's like looking like we, sh we should be looking at a little blue here. So maybe uh, blue-black splash the diver. We should take, uh, take a look at the uh, signals we're getting here with regards to blue and turn in that direction. So yeah, I'm going to take Dismissal and we'll start looking uh, for more signals of open blue. Uh, nothing costly here in terms of you know we can take a one of these artifact creatures and have a generic playable or price of betrayal which we probably won't main or an opportunist which we would grudgingly main one of probably just want uh one of the artifact creatures reset press is down for the opportunist um Yeah, maybe you can get a little bit of life back if that's what you're talking about, gaining gaining some life to make command a little better, but that's kind of a stretch to think that's going to impact our games too much. It could happen, but I don't think it's something to make a decision around. I kind of like the flyer, although we're in, we're we're leaning into blue, which means we'll probably get the flyers we we want, but I like silver wing here. I'm going to take the, the Silver Wing. We'll get Opportunists. This is all pretty replaceable stuff. Well, I would much rather have the 4-5 that draws a card. 5 Toughness is better than 5 Power to me in this format, in, in these 5-4 versus 4-5 questions, and I'll, I'll gladly pay an extra mana to draw a card. But I don't think we're playing anything else here. I'm not going to main deck Price of Betrayal again. So we'll take the narrow playable, or narrowly playable. It's not really narrow, it's just a creature, but it's narrowly playable. Wanderer's Strike is pretty late and uh, splashable if we get some more globes or whatever. Um, yeah, Soren's Thirst has, uh, has more application in the deck since we're trying to keep our life total up to command successfully. So there is that, we could just take the on color removal. But I think we take uh, Wanderer's Strike here is just the best card. And yeah, we don't know what we're doing besides black at this point. So I'm going to take Wanderer's Strike. Another Behemoth, Charity Extractor, I've all but stopped playing. I, I played it a couple times early to see if it could do the thing we need to do. I've all but stopped playing. This maybe is the deck, you know, maybe we would actually want it over a Silver Wing. Again, uh, high toughness for good defense and lifelink to bring our life total up for more commanding. And I am not going to play a second behemoth, so I'll give myself this extractor option, even though I don't like it. Um, bacon for Planeswalker possible splashes versus a generically playable white card and a barely playable green card. I guess we take the barely playable green card here. I would still be interested in... Green has some life gain and the uncommon uh, lifelink ramp dude. So we'll take Croc. 
in case uh, we end up green, black, and need some playables. Like, I don't know which one of these I would want to play, for example. 5-4 five, five, or 3 with Hexproof. Probably 3 with Hexproof is better than 4 without. You like Beacon? That's fair. Maybe we'll get the uh, Planeswalkers past us that make us wish we had that. But yeah, this was not a great pack. Feather, are you going to redeem us? I don't think so. Probably need to take Kazmina here. Uh, I'm tempted by gems, but this is a very powerful uncommon. And uh, our deck is also pretty weak right now, so I do want to shore it up. So yeah, Cruelty. Yeah, I like Kazmina over Cruelty. I feel like we'll we'll find our other we'll find removal. Oh, thanks for that, pretzel. Well, we could be blue. Uh, that's the thing we don't know what we are. Like I like uh, like this is not really an important card. This is a cool splash if you have a repeat source of green. One timing a merfolk skydiver, not that big a deal. Uh, we could take the cruelty. Uh, in the sense that, sorry, all right, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, we are, we, we could take the cruelty in the sense that we know we're black and we, we're not 100% that we're blue, but we really did, uh, yeah, let's get this out of here, that's confusing things, isn't it? The signals we got in pack one suggest blue might be kind of open. Yeah, the, the Skydiver is not super relevant here, but we could, like, even if we take Kazmina, we could end up getting green shoved down our throats after this. And, uh, yeah, I don't like white, but also, I mean, does that mean you want to take, like, Pegasus here? Like, I'm, I'm leaving Wanderer Strike in. I think we take, I'm going to take Kazmina, though. Mm, I see yeah, Rocket's got opinions. You. Prove yourself. Always opinions from that one. No, no, the sign I'm talking about was uh, getting... There was like three or four playable blue cards around pick... Feel like pick six to nine, somewhere in that range last pack. That's what I was talking about. We can take Firemind Vessel here to help splashing. Uh, that's not... It's it's not enough that Huatli is okay. I don't care about... I, I think Huatli... Uh, I'd have to be all in on Hotly, I think, before I cared about her. We're just going to take uh, the Thunder. This is the kind of card I was hoping to pick up in a, a black-green situation to support the command. You know, dig through the deck, get some life. Yeah, Firemane was on the table. It was definitely on the table, but we passed it. That's cool. We can get a wolf here. Oh no, uh, now we're looking again, like maybe we're not green, which makes me want black blue control elements and probably just a totally lost, which is a really weak third pick, frankly. And I'm continuing to not like this draft and not like where it's at. We could take uh, Iron Bully. I, I, I'm ne I've never loved the bully, and but when I'm proliferating, it's a little more acceptable, but we're not really proliferating much here yet. We all think of this one. I do not know. I'm gonna go with totally lost. Hey, Remench, good to have you. Wow, what is this? What is going on? Triumph. Uh, we could just take gems here, unless we thought we were going to potentially still be green. We could take the New Horizons and uh, possibly veer back towards base green, black, splash blue. Yeah, I like what Re Reset Press is saying. You guys want Herald or Gems? Yeah, I, uh, I feel like New Horizons might backdoor us into a green-black that'll actually let us have a complete deck. I am pretty 
unimpressed with what we're doing so far. I'm pretty unimpressed with adding a herald to it, but I know we only have uh, we only have one, but we can go get more. Um, and also, eventually, it becomes. I'm gonna take the butcher. We'll do we'll do gems. We'll take some gems. Who cares about Harold? Harold's whatever. Giant, though, I like. I like the hedge on green or just taking gems, obviously, because that's what I did. Here, we'll take another globe. Plating or visionary or bad fixing. Plating seems obvious, but creature seems nice. Like, I might just want the visionary. Uh, it both can put things in that we can command out and uh, really does a job we need right now, which is to shore up early game. So, yeah, I'm going to take the visionary. Oh, here's another one. Maybe that would have changed my opinion, but I probably just want to... Uh, I think we take Reaper, though, here. Really trying to get us to take Price of Betrayal. I suppose we'll take this one over another laptop. I don't think we're ever playing either of these. Oh, here, let me... Uh, I can adjust the record and stuff. Get a little more clear here. Okay, there we go. Well, I'll take it because I don't want a second behemoth, but I hope we don't play that. Dread Malkin. I don't think we're a Dread Malkin deck. We could be an Aid the Fallen deck if we get a Planeswalker. Yeah, we'll take an Aid here over the uh, Kitty. Uh, no Escape or Bully. I just don't think the bully is doing anything for us. Let me take the no escape. Hope we don't play that. Another behemoth. Domri. There's straight up gems, but at what cost, given how tight we are on good playables here? Reaver is the is the card we need. I'm never playing Bulwark Giant. Gems or Reaver here. Yeah, I don't think Reaver is... Reaver is great, but it's not uh, that much of an impact on our win percentage that I would take it over Gems. What a glorious day for some anarchy. Uh, now we have Vraska. We can add to the pile. Or any of these blue cards look pretty good here. Avian Eternal in particular. Uh, let's look at our curve again. I like Vraska, but we may want the Avon just to uh, fill, fill the curve. Easy Vraska says... Uh, Black Adder. I don't think it's easy because of our curve. If uh, we had no fours and an Icicle at three, I would agree with you it would be a snap Vraska. But curve considerations in pack three suggest that it is not snap. It's at least a debate. That's true. This doesn't really count. We hope to not play the Charity Extractor. So we, I, I'm okay with the Silver Wing. It's not great, but I definitely like playing it over the uh, Charity Extractor. So... Some say I never heard and we do have Aid of the Aid the Fallen. We might want to get Vraska back. But I don't know. Hey, Smash, thanks for that resub. Appreciate that. All right, we'll take Vraska as clearly more powerful, but I uh, I am uh, 
thinking the Avon Eternal is a justifiable pick, but it's also, I think it's pretty close. Daniel, thanks for the resub as well. Appreciate that. Uh, here we could pick up a finisher for the three slot. Probably better than the Skulker and definitely better than any of this going on. So yeah, easy finisher. Wow, look at this. It's just been... I've never seen this many prices in one draft. Uh, we could take the Gateway Plaza if we thought we had any interest in splashing this Diver. Uh, but we have two Guild Globes, but this Diver is not a great splash unless you have a repeat source of green. And we're probably better off just taking a Wanderer's Strike, like ditching this Diver and um, being able to splash a couple of uh, Wanderer's Strikes, potentially. I'll take the, like, I, I don't know if we want the second strike or the gateway plaza to shore up casting the first strike. I guess I'll take the second, but I don't know if we play two unless we come up with something else besides two guild globes. More strikes. Uh, Wanderer. Another no escape? What are we playing here? It's gotten weird. Oh yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should we had to do that, huh? Yeah, we better try and, and combo that off. We could still do black white potentially. Let's see, what would that cost? Like We could still like splash Kazmina and a totally lost. Well, I think it certainly justifies at least taking the populace here. There's not not nothing else to take. Yeah, we could also take uh, take the beacon to su to support uh, the Kazmina splash. But if we're heading down the white path, then I'd like to get the populace. You believe the wall is playable, Roland? I hate that wall. I just feel so let down every time. I've never even cast it. I, I shouldn't even say I feel let down when I cast it. I feel excited when my opponent does. But uh, I respect your opinion, X4. So if you're telling me you're having some success, in, in what, what role, what job is it doing for you that, uh, that you feel good about playing it? I just don't like it against aggro because it doesn't threaten to kill anything. Let's take a... Uh, mm, populace. If we do end up white, black, we would want the populace over, over the thing. Because we can take a globe here. Probably just want a second uh, giant, though. And then we don't have to play these at all. Let's take a giant. Another wanderer. Really can get that combo going if we want it. Sunblade Angel. Yeah, white was wide open. We could take a transmutation. Hey, Lost Nightmare. Glad you could join us. You're not too late for the end. What are we taking here, though, folks? I don't know. Are we white or blue? Two wanderers. We already got one wanderer.
I'm not sure we want. We have two wanderers too. We have an aid the fallen, which we might use. I don't. I don't know if we want to aid the fallen in this deck. We're gonna aid the fallen with uh, command the dread horde. Tough one. Yeah, Angel is on the table as well. It uh, is splashable and produces quite a life burst for commanding Dreadhorde. I don't think we want Bully. We can at least cast all these on three, you know. We only got four threes, but... You just want to switch to white? I don't know if we're switching to white, but we, we it's, it's not out of the question. I'll take it on spec, though. I shouldn't be taking things on spec. Pack three, pick eight, but here we are. Um, thirst. No escape. And we're coming up at the end where I want to go and make some... Maybe we can take links. Maybe we are... All right, so now I'm going to pause, and we have... Dreadhorde Butcher. Domri, I think we already have four of, but we have Dreadhorde Butcher and uh, Command the Dreadhorde to go and craft. So we're going to do that. Hey, Zergling. All right, now we can finish the draft and grind a few gems at least. 60 total gem grind, not bad. But something that is bad, I think, is this deck. I don't like this deck at all. What are we even doing? Let's see, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five cards in white. And one, two, three, oh, this, this doesn't count. Because we could also look at something like this. Reset press, I uh, I don't hate your prediction. No worries. No, no. Uh... <laughs> No hurt feelings here. Maybe if we're splashing bounce, we do it this way. Yeah, I'll change theme. Thanks. Hide up here. Uh, no, I don't like this card. Main should probably find something else to do. We can, if we're, if we're, well. Okay, so we got to figure out if we're splashing white or blue. Or rather, what's our, what's our, what's our main, I want to ask, uh, what is our main, second main color? Is it white or blue? W or U for what the second color should be. Chat wants to start. Will you start white then? Let's start with the white build. Uh, that still might play that. But probably not that. Mm. 
And is this the only thing we got? We have two guild globes for our splash. Do we get, uh, we didn't get the beacon, did we? No. Hmm. Oh, did I take it out? Yeah, uh, probably over price. Only nine creatures in this bad boy. Say again, Draconis, you would you want Drake over totally lost? Down a thirst for a prismite. Are we in a prismite situation? Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna overrule. I'm overriding uh, the voting. I don't think uh, I don't think white is correct as the main color. There's just more we can fill out our deck with with blue that I like. And then yeah, Wanderer's Strike, maybe a second strike, and just bail on the angel. Unfortunately, uh, Wanderer's Strike is a real non-bow with command. Like we want to kill stuff and then get it back. Uh The archetype was wide open. Sorry, Zach. Uh, one of the reasons we're running the Wanderer is that it combos with uh, Command the Dreadhorde, because Command deals damage. Ah. Stratic, hey, bud. Uh, are you excited to have the MC3 being on Arena or afraid there will be issues? Why not both? If we get rid of a second thirst for an angel, which was suggested, then we definitely have to play some of both lands. Play, some, play a couple of planes. Like, what do you think of that? The guild globes helping stitch it all together. Yeah, not duo standard. I don't know much of the details though, Stratic. Are they ready? Probably not. Will they learn from their mistakes? I hope so. Oh yeah, maybe we cut Aid the Fallen. We have uh, Wander and Vraska, so at least we have a couple of uh, a couple of walkers. We could cut it for that second thirst. You put a second no escape in. Thanks for that sub. Five month resub. Thank you, Fellhammer. No escape at least doesn't ex. Oh, it is exiled. See, I don't want to like. <laughs> we have have a lot of non bows with our command, so I'm just going to keep the two thirsts here. Uh, 
So I, I, I like naming... Uh, I, somebody on uh, YouTube was suggesting or asking for me to not spoil the results of the draft in the name, but it's how I've been naming stuff, and it I like it better than just a cold, heartless date to differentiate the different titles on my YouTube stream. I don't know. Let's uh, call this uh, Splashing Around... But I'm not gonna worry too much about that. You wanna see how I'm whitelisted, Vaporkin? I'd love to. Let's find out that I'm whitelisted. I'm in. All right. Uh par on this one i'm gonna just set it three if we can uh pull even maybe it's like two and a half if uh if we only win twice i would call it fair if we won three times it'd be like all right we uh at least got to even with a deck that nobody particularly loved Uh, we'll keep. We have a Desperation Dismissal if we need to, and our main colors at least. Globe is cool. Hopefully dig for some more land uh, while setting up our Strike Splash. Not finding the extra land, instead finding our big drops. Uh, I could dismiss their army token, but that seems super weak. We're just going to hang on here and hope we find something. The trouble is we're multiple draws away from being happy. There's no top deck, I think, that could would make us just fist pump. Like, we really want land, but land doesn't even really get us anywhere. Um, at this, at least this threatens to block uh, two of their three creatures. It is both fat and it drew uh, an unusual percentage of its fatness, but it definitely has a high end. So... Alright, so they didn't send in the Opportunist. They are willing to send in the Reaver. What does that mean? What does that mean for what they're representing here? Is there something... Uh, it might be a finisher of their own? Their own finisher is the only thing that makes sense to me here. So I'm going to let it let this pass. Although at some point we got to trigger it. Yeah, but if they if it was aid, they would send in the opportunist. you got to come up with why, why these two and not this one. And... If they have aid, Vampire Opportunist is an attack as well. Or, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it could be the uh, same thing. If it was plus three, plus three, they would they would attack with this one as well. It seems like it's finisher, so I'm going to say no blocks. And if it's their only play, they may end up playing it anyway. More often than not, if you come up with the line that made sense, it's it's it is what happened, you know. Uh, yeah, thank you. We'll get to the battlefield scene. Okay, um, getting a little uncomfortable here. Uh, we could bounce. <laughs> Our globe. I would do it if I could recast it, but we're that short on land. Our life total is dropping, which makes command steadily worse. And we're probably at a point where we have to just let their finisher happen. I'm going to dismiss the opportunist here. This is not great, but I feel like we need to do something to, to set some things back. 
Um, I could bounce the token, but my thinking is... Our token threatens to trade with their token, and I want to... I want to use Callous Dismissal to disrupt their play in a way that causes them to respend mana. I didn't want them to. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make them respend mana, and obviously I don't want them to respend Reaver mana. So that's why I chose that one. Not coming up Millhouse for us here, but we have a no escape. Maybe we'll catch something. They try a giant here. We'll pick, snap it off. It's got a scry one too, so if we uh, do anything that allows for that, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm gonna offer this trade for trick or whatever. I see how it's going to be, deck. I see how it's going to be. It's all right. We're uh, getting the giant in there for Dreadhorde. All right. Land is a starting point. Well, we were guessing at Vraska's finisher before. If we see a double attack here, we can presume we're probably right on that. Eh, it looks like it's not going to matter. You won. I don't let anything slip through the cracks. Other than myself, of course. Really rough. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast this since... It, they, it may divert their attention to it. Oh, Hector, I called that out. I called out that Nonbo in uh, the deck building along with our double strike. We have a bunch of... Uh, we, we have three command Nonbos. It's not a great command deck. That's true. If somehow the Wanderer survives... Well, it doesn't do nothing. But, uh, deader than dead. Yeah, maybe we need an 18th land, and I didn't properly uh, take that... I don't want to uh, be results oriented and adjust the mana base just because we got screwed there, but we can take a look at our high end and say we have, uh, like, maybe cut the behemoth and just add a. Yes, we add a, an island. No, we have so much black we would want to add. I think we could go 972. I don't know if we need Naga as just an early body. Maybe we maybe we do over an escape and, and we're just trying to trade stuff off. No, um no, it's not worth ditching the command just because of some nonbos. You don't need command to get every last thing in every graveyard to be good. You just need it to get you a value. So I'm not going to adjust just for that. But yeah, that's what I was thinking. That if we uh, we could, I, rather than swap this out because of any non-bodes, we could swap out a no escape and uh, put in generic dude here and generic dude helps us get there. We could also just put back in uh, Behemoth. Like, maybe this generic is better than this one.
Yeah, I mean, you don't want to overreact to a bad draw, which happens. But I think this is a reasonable thought, given the circumstance of our deck. Yeah, let's try this. Trying to scrap for some wins with this one. None of us are pretty very pleased with this deck, so... Set expectations. Oh yeah, one of the things I... Oh man, uh, it seems like people like the LR appearance well enough, but I left thinking there was a million things I meant to say and didn't and forgot to say. And following up on Marshall's comment about expectations was something I meant to talk to because uh, I was reading about happiness and how studies are showing that like expectations are really what drive happiness that so if you keep your uh expectations low you're going to be a happier person in general hopefully we get some value out of this bleeding edge on turn three hey we got our islands so we also have a thunder drake on four but yeah, I would love to see a nice two-toughness creature here from Oppo that we would, are interested in taking out. No such luck, but at least we're not under pressure. Maybe we'll get a globe and we can go Thunder Drake into Bleeding Edge. Globe for value. Nope. All right. Uh, it's kind of a free attack for them, but I don't want it to make uh, their bleeding edge good or anything. We're just going to say no blocks. Good good bluff attack from our Zax. I bet it's a bluff attack. It's most likely a bluff attack, but it's a good one because there's just enough of a chance that they're making their Soren's Thirst useful or whatever that I don't want to give them that. I'll happily give them that. That was uh, pretty aggressive to be that concerned about our Drake. <clears throat> that just seemed like a lot of wheel spinning to me. Uh, we'll go ahead and play a Plains and drop the Visionary. If this were instant, I would have uh, done that to leave up two black, but it's it's not. So here's a Naga Eternal that we brought in instead of a uh, No Escape. I guess I'd rather have the No Escape right now, but the Naga Eternal is not terrible. Uh, we also get a, our own free attack. Let's see what if uh, they'll fall for it. Nope. They're not interested. That's okay. We'll go with uh, Tithe Bearer. Again, no instant speed, so we can't get them in a double block situation. Uh, but we could loot before deciding anything, since we have the tools for that. I'm going to loot, loot first, ask questions later. And let's pitch an island and drop a swamp. Uh, we, I'm not going to get fancy here. Let's just wander, strike the big dude, and swing in.
Hmm, let's see. So we have... If we cast Globe, we have seven mana. We cast Globe, that leaves us with five. Then with Globe and five mana, we can Bleeding Edge and Soren's Thirst, which would allow us to trade... We have four, uh, five, six, seven, eight total damage we can spread around between these two. So I'm going to send in the Tithe Bearer, and if they double block, we get to do some... Uh, shenanigans around with these with these three cards to to clear their uh clear their board yeah we just have to be careful of auto tap all right even better i guess we'll go I don't know if it's better to do the Bleeding Edge or the Soren's Thirst here. I'll go with Bleeding Edge, and then we can cast uh, the Naga Eternal and keep pressure up. If they had double blocked, I would have gone into full control to be sure, Ferengi, but I think they let you set damage now, but I wouldn't have trusted it. it I, you, I had until the double block happened to put in full control, though, so it was okay. Well, just when you think you're rolling along nicely, Oppo drops a finale. That's kind of stinky. But let's go ahead and I guess we globe first and then Vraska. Assassin coming for you. That's a bad assassin. You know, I'm gonna offer army for uh, for thirst. Yeah, I would keep lands for Kazmina, except I can actually make this trade here, and I I'm, I want to do it. We'll keep lands from now on for Kazmina, but I actually did want to tap out there. Hey, look at that. Fancy. I'm an artist when it comes to murder. Okay, what do we got here? Spark Reapers, Tithe Bearers, Naga, Erratic Visionary, Thunder Drake. Yes, we gotta watch out for giants. Can't just do giants willy nilly. And also don't wanna just set us up to lose, but let's figure out what we're gonna get. I think we want. Uh, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You go to three. Yeah, uh, let's see. They don't have bounce, so we can do that. Um, we can take their Spark Reaper and go to three, or do this and go to six. I don't think there's, it's not like they're playing burn. Yeah, let's go to three. Let me make sure I got it right though. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16.
Yeah, we're not taking Naga, we get the Reaper. Okay, I think that's right. Don't kill us! In some way, I'm not thinking... Yeah, I should have played land for Reaper, that's a good point. I, I'm kind of just... Hoping we win, but look at that. Are you serious? Okay, it didn't set off the chain at least. Uh, but now we're in a little bit of a pinch here. I'm gonna go ahead and visionary now. And we gotta play it a little safe though and just attack with Thunder Drake. Oh, I can sack Vraska too. She's not doing anything else. Yeah, the bat has haste. But at least is only two power. Well, that's a no-brainer, no-brainer double block. And then we'll sack Vraska before damage. We could consider sacking something else, like the Visionary, even. Yeah, good point, Stratic. Just trying to decide if we are sacking anything else here, because we do have another Reaper to drop. We're drawing to Kazmina, Callus Dismissal, Wander Strike, Sunblade Angels in the deck. Just stuff. Uh, I think we, like, I'll just keep the Visionary for looting. Oh yeah, good point. Reaper's not even dying. I'm not sure I was acting like it was. Uh, all right. Still doesn't wipe our board to play that, which is important. Uh, that really stinks. We can't... I guess we could block that and it would be fine. Okay, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go ahead and loot here. Yikes. Grim. And yeah, I gotta keep attacking with the Drake. Uh, we know they have Massacre Girl. Massacre Girl doesn't do her thing on this board. If they attack with the Druid and we block and kill it, and then they Massacre Girl, it still doesn't do anything on the board. Um, so I'm gonna be aggressive here. We gotta try and end this game. Yeah, I'll keep two cards in hand. I know, but we can't... Like, if they draw exactly a two toughness and blow us out, we were gonna... We were gonna be blown out anyway, right? It doesn't change the... It doesn't change the correct attack. That's... You know, talking on LR about avoiding tilt is focusing on what you can affect, and... Knowing that they could find a two-drop and wreck everything... 
doesn't actually change any of our decisions, though, is the thing. Man. Flooded as heck. How about uh, just a simple old uh, wanderer? Hey, is it that easy? Nobody told me it was that easy. Buckle under my blade. Hey, don't worry. I'll be quick. No, it's not Valhalla. I, I did not call upon my one time. I simply asked. That was that was not a one time uh, a one time use. All right. Well, we got one. We're not going winless. That's good. Held back the Drake in case of Shriek Diver, but we were at three. So even if they had Shriek Diver, we don't lose, right? So I don't I don't like playing around Shriek Diver when Shriek Diver Diver doesn't even kill us. Alright, let's try again. Uh, at this point, looking like I'll have a special guest on Wednesday, about uh, 10 o'clock, so like an hour into my stream. Uh, my neighbor, Jerry Tycho Brahe Tolkens, is going to stop by and join our stream on Wednesday, so that'll be cool. Um, can we keep this? It's got a drake, it's got some land, it's got nothing else going on. Ugh. I'm going to mulligan this. I really hate it as a hand. This looks better. Not necessarily. We do have early plays, I swear. Both of our planes in hand, though, is not amazing, but whatever. Ah, oh, F you, Toll. That card. You think you're all right. You think you're doing fine. I wonder if they have, like, no escape or something. I would have taken out a Planeswalker. Yeah, they must have no escape. There's no way they leave me with a planeswalker, do nothing, and then pass like that. Um, to the point that I'm just going to offer up the finisher. If they have bad quench or planeswalker or, or no escape, they can have the finisher. Pause, and they declined. But now they've got to do something. And we have a totally lost, so I'm not going to do anything. Mmm, that's annoying. Wow. All right, fine. They're never going to play anything. We Now we have to give them something for their stupid counterspell. <sighs> well, maybe we'll get another thing we can offer up that's better, better to offer than one of our Planeswalkers here. Uh, 
All right, I'll offer the Wanderer. No, we'll offer the Wanderer, I think. That's my that's my thought. You want to wait one more turn? What are we waiting for? Reset. To be able to, to get around Crush Descent, if that's what they're doing? Sure feels like no escape, not Crush Descent. Well, yeah, they could do that and attack it. All right, I'll wait one more turn. Not not much is happening to us here. Did they have a target for it on five? Uh, yeah, maybe it's Crush Descent. Let's uh, let's let's see if we can find one more land since they're not doing anything, and at least play around the Crush Descent. thing I like doing here is we can let's totally lost this token and we'll at least understand whether it's crush descent or um, or whether it's no escape because if there's a pause here it means it's uh, crush descent and if there's no pause here it means it's no escape but they may not if it's crush descent they may not play it because they want it for the other thing so let's see we're kind of hoping for a pause here because then we can draw a land and actually play around the counter spell or Ah, it might actually be good for them. You know, if they crush Descent here, they get a 4-4, uh, which is not great. Like, that's actually... Although then the Wanderer comes down and, and takes it out. All right, we're going to do it. We'll offer... We're, we'll see. All right. There was a little bit of a pause there, don't you think? It was not Snap. Well, we're going to find out. Uh, I'm going to actually start with the Thunder Drake. All right, we've played around that for seven turns now. It's over with. So maybe that wasn't a pause. Hey, maybe. Maybe, we'll sure find out. Uh, let's see, we're gonna play, uh, maybe I don't wanna play that yet. Yeah, I mean, we might just wanna wander strike the eternal, but if we uh, play like the wanderer and they attack it once, we can uh, strike the next turn. Like we play Wander, they attack it down to three. We strike it back up to four. It still has two activations and that seems reasonable. And then uh, we can drop two Walker. Yeah, we can potentially drop two next turn if we find a land. So let's do that. That's not great. We could only handle one flyer, not two. Straight up ignoring the Wanderer. Uh, well, we gotta try a strike here. And we'll go for the Drake. And then drop a Visionary, we hope.
Why let them swing on Wander instead of just activate it was too loyalty either way. I don't understand what line you were asking me to take. You wanted me to... I mean, there was nothing to exile, so... All right, let's bear some tithe. Try to. Are we gonna get bad quenched now? All right. Well, that certainly helps. If we can land an angel. Top decking com command, not so fine anymore. And let's see. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we're going to angel this turn. And I guess we ash go at Ashiok because we can't survive too much more from him from them and I'm gonna send both they want to eat the visionary that's cool well less cool than now that they've done that yeah we'll do this and I'm going to play, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm going to play the Swamp. I know we have Kazmina, but off land we can play both of our walkers next turn. Although I guess we're going to draw, no, we're not going to draw that. Yeah, I'm going to play this. Well, they need removal or another flyer or something, or else we at least get to come through with that. If they, uh... Let's see. Yeah, well, going after Ashiok, and then we might command to get the Aven Eternal. Yeah, we could also do Kazmina discard Vraska. Yeah, we can also try to get Ashiok and command the Ashiok. I like I think both of those are interesting. What about Kazmina and at least uh see what comes of it. Times of war. We are the future. Bleeding Edge or Vraska? I think. We could Bleeding Edge and create a 2 2 that really makes sure. Yeah, I don't think we want to do that though. Even ditch the the dread horde, but yeah, let's ditch the edge and actually play Vraska. Before I make you dizzy, I've done things I'm not proud of. 
All right, big turn here. What's Oppo got to save their Ashiok plan? We only have a couple of Ashiok activations. Kind of have to take him out here or else we're in big trouble. All right, so far our angel is getting there. Uh, I definitely want to send Angel at Ashiok, just thinking about other attacks and whether we want to make them. I think I'm going to wait on this stuff until we make sure that the Angel has connected. But we can send in um, the Angel at Ashiok and the Death Toucher, the Assassin at them. That's fine. See if they want to trade off with the token there. Uh, we didn't get life gain out of the Sunblade, unfortunately. But now let's take a look. Ah. Ditch an island. I like uh, Thirsting the Opportunist. And now we can make one of these. And we get everything, because it doesn't hurt us at all. No, we just do it right now, right? Why not? Welcome to my world of nightmare. Behold. I always return. Yes, we got it. Wanderer plus Dreadhorde. A fine, fine combo. Come on, Gert Jan, what you got? That was a tough turn. Hey, Nick, I'm whispering you a link to a spreadsheet with a bunch of codes on it. And please don't share that link. But if you want to spread codes around to viewers and community members here who are making this place better for everybody, that would be cool. Uh, let's see, who else am I going to have on the... Yeah, it might be a uh, salty oppo. So be it. Ah, no problem. You have it if it's available. If you're phasing, if you if you happen to be phased in and something cool happens and you want to throw out a code, you have the power.
Hmm. Do I have any other mods in the house? Nah, there's no, uh, I mean, it's their clock. They can do whatever they want with it. Yeah, if that's, uh, if that's what Oppo needs to deal with their salt, then I feel luckier than Oppo. Oh, here. First, I've been meaning to... So I finally have... So there's all these tools that are not available in chat when I pop out the chat, but I don't have chat popped out, so I finally got to do things like that. Uh, like making Valhalla's, Valhalla's Chosen a mod. And I'm going to whisper... Valhalla's... All right, Valhalla's, you have the link as well if you want to toss around... Codes for people who are positive influences on our community here, that would be great. Oh yeah, sorry, let me, uh, Nick is asking for edit access, but that means I need to go change that real quick. One second. Maybe the link can edit. All right. Valhallis and Nick have the power. And again, I have, uh, I have codes to give away because it's part of what Wizards of the Coast has given me to celebrate my sponsored week, my, my featured streamer status this week. So thank you, Wizards, for giving me some stuff to throw around. That's fun. Hey, we got two wins. How exciting. Uh, the codes that I have are for one booster pack on Arena, and I think any one account can use up to 10 of them, so you can even earn multiples from me, but at some point, you get capped. Pretty sure they're for just for packs, just for a booster. All right, let's go back in. Now I haven't done that full comparison. I just want to actually just calculate the value of, of boosters over time. But yeah, we could totally see, we could probably just Monte Carlo that and use the results so far to get an idea of how much or less, how much more the value is. Um, I don't have any set plan for how we're doling out the codes other than I wanted to give them to some trusted mods and friends uh, so that they could decide how to do it. You can do it by whisper, you can throw in into chat and just let people race, you know. Uh, we're gonna keep this, uh, we're on, we get, we're on the draw, so we get some extra draws. We have Kazmina, I'm gonna keep it. It's not great though, especially this bleeding edge that needs black black. Well, that helps part part way there. Come.
Conjurant on two. Going to play this Swamp and hope, hope, hope that we find uh, another Swamp before this Conjurant gets bigger. They might get bigger right now sometime. No? All right, we did it. Snap this off immediately. Thank you, Hobbs. Appreciate the resub. Or the sub. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, we can... There's nothing death, death touch or anything. Okay, so let's play a Plains and a Kazmina. Uh, we have two... Steer the course of destiny. We have two globes. Focus on what matters. Uh, we'll ditch a land. We're likely to find our six still roughly on time. Well, I guess we Kazmina again, see what we find. Kind of hope for a land. Uh, now we got a, a little tougher choice to make. But I'm still inclined to ditch land and just find our sixth in time. If we don't cast the Tithe Bearer immediately, it's not the end of the world. We have, uh, uh, we could play the Thunder Drake here and then have Soren's Thirst and Naga Eternal on five next turn. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be greedy. They might be ramping towards something big that we can snap off with the Wanderer. All right, that makes things a little more expensive. Just a touch. Uh, unfortunately, that means we can't double spell, which is the real bummer here. But we can attack with the Drake. It's technically beating the statue. Pretty, pretty punish, pretty punish me pretty hard for being greedy on the land pitching. But again, it all made sense at the time. Now we really want another land. All right, we found the land, so we can do this and this and kill their big dude. Maybe an argument for just getting in there with more than just uh, the Thunder Drake here. If they want to double block, they trade off their 1-1 one, one for our one of our 2-2s. Two um, it's not a great top deck. It's pretty... for To spend 6 mana to oppress someone's spell cost is a little late in the game to be doing that. It, it certainly can have an impact. And it's, you know, it's holding us back from doing exactly what we want to do here, so there's no no question about that. But uh, it it's so, if you Quadrant Theory it, like, you play that while you're behind and it's just useless, which is one of the major reasons. When anything utterly fails at the behind Quadrant in the Quadrant Theory, that's where a card gets the bad, the, the bad marks, because if it's doing nothing for you when behind your deck had better be hyper aggro, or else that can just be a blank too often with the way limited plays out. Yeah, I like uh, I like leaving the three doodle block and doing this, and then if they want to go at Kazmina, or we let her go, and if they want to go at the Wanderer, we actually have blocks.
Yeah, it was a good attack. I think they they must be wanting to increase their army or something. Totally happy to do this. Well, we can play Visionary and Soren's Thirst, which is interesting. Uh, we can do that after combat and get double activation and use the Thirst to take out wherever they block. Um, not going to get Pump on Drake. Oh, yeah, I could do it. it could have done it mid-combat, sure. Uh, I wasn't thinking about that. But that's all right. We'll get... So they should be... We'll see if that costs us. Minor punt. They should be at 9, not 10. Oh, also almost decided to completely wreck us on the... Oh, yeah, we, we don't get both. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, so we're going to just use the Thirst. It wasn't a punt. It was only a punt in my brain to think that line was uh, possible to begin with. We'll go ahead and take out... I think Visionary is more important here. We don't want to let him find answers. Yeah, it turned out not even to be a minor punt. It turned out to just be bad reading. If you see an assassin coming for you, that's a bad assassin. Another thirst. I guess we thirst the death touch and get him to two. No reason to mess around. Yeah, I don't like worrying about Vraska here. Good enough for Oppo. Hey, look, we cleared par. Three wins, almost too easy. This deck isn't that good. But hey, three wins, we can get three wins off anything, right? Mm, let's see, 10 point for me. Platinum is close. Uh, give me a short bio break and I'll be right back and we'll jump into the next game, all right? Hang on, just a couple minutes.
Burrito Stallion is asking about command. It did its job one time. And as far as Soren's Thirst, Spark Reaper, Sunblade to keep life total high, well, it's to fill out our deck. It's not like there's better cards than those that we are choosing not to run just so that we can get some incidental life gain. We're just happy that some of the cards we have to run, given our card pool, generate some incidental life gain. Or we're picking the ones that generate incidental life gain over something like, you know, the Behemoth or whatever. We're at a high risk of flood, but we do have a looter and we have a lot of high drops. Um, I want to be sure to cast our spells and our expensive spells. So I think if we risk some flood and let lean, uh, lean a bit on our looting, then uh, <clears throat> we'll be fine. We'll keep this. Of course, this is our two planes. We have exactly two planes in the deck and they've decided to show up here. All right, we can get our thirst on now if we have to. <clears throat> and we have Raska if nothing happens. Hmm, let's get our thirst on here. It means Raska is not a guarantee for next turn, but I like it for the taking out this populace while we can. And we can always play the Wanderer to ensure that we do something. All right, we found a swamp to get Raska down, which is even better. I'm good at what I do. Nobody appreciates my handiwork. Another populace. Here's some of the flood out that was uh, warned against. Um, <clears throat> whatever I feel suits them. Well, which do you want? You want to? Turn that into a 2-2 two -two, or are you going to take it? All right, they're taking that. Keep your friends close. Kill your enemies. You could just play the Wanderer. And then it really sets them up to not have... They're green-white, though, and they may drop a big thing that we can just exile with the Wanderer. So I'm going to go ahead and actually strike... Um, you want to you, you want to save strike uh, MTG Viz is super greed and wants to save the strike until we can proliferate next turn onto both tokens. I don't think I'm going to be that greedy. Although let's see, what's the word like? They might untap, use removal on this, and then just attack Vraska to death. In which case we are pretty unhappy. I'm just gonna do it now. Apparently that was correct. Talking on LR about all the easy, the early scoops we see, many, many early scoops, and maybe they were disadvantaged there, but I hardly think they were below, were they below 10% win chance? I don't know. Whatever, par's just six and a half now, I guess, on everything. We'll keep that kind of garbagey looking cards here. This is why we don't like, I mean, we're main decking Naga Eternals and stuff, so you know we're not thrilled with where things are at when you're doing that. What, we needed more proof that Vaporkin is always right? Um, 
Let's play the Reaper here. Ah, we can just play the Eternal, I guess. Never mind. I'm getting fancy play syndrome. I'm, I'm trying to set up, like, if we Reaper, we have this 2-3 that can attack into things like 1-3s and set up Vraska's Finishers, but whatever. We'll take Vraska's Finisher value if we can get it, but we don't need to try and do any elaborate setup here. I just like throwing Naga Eternal in the way of this Prophet. Uh, this is awfully suspicious, but whatever, we'll take uh, trade. We're going to trade for this profit or we're going to trade for their trick or whatever. Only trading for a one mana trick, but still trading one for one. Go with a silver wing, see what they've got coming, use all our mana. We got a profit coming. Burrito has decided to never scoop after listening to our discussion on LR last week. Certainly scoop way, 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 way less. I, I scoop before it's 100%, but pretty rarely. Usually it's 99.99% or... Um... If I block here, we could be trading zero for one for a removal spell or whatever. I'm going to say that's not worth it. All right, I like Drake here with five mana. Then if we draw a land, we are two spells next turn. Certainly part of the equity people miss when they scoop early is that their opponent actually isn't going to play the way they thought. You know, sometimes you're like, well, I know what my hand is, and I can see this board, and obviously they have this, so I'm out. And then it's like, oh, if you just waited, they actually weren't ever going to do that. I kind of almost want to... Uh, nah, this is so, so obvious makes me not want to try and bleeding edge their weird because they seem to have a trick here. <clears throat> I think we just try and race, see what they do. Yeah. All right, well, might need a two for one ourselves to take out that weird. It's kind of two for two, really. We at least end up with a, an amass two, two. Uh, but I think, and then we get a Thunder Drake as well. So let's Bleeding Edge and Thirst. You like Thirst Vraska? I like that. I like taking out this thing before it gets out of hand. Not bad for us. Uh, let's see where they go with these scries. Bottom, bottom. So they are not finding answers to our flyers. That's good to see. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I could have done a could have done it differently. I was think I was thinking of Vraska's finisher as um, combat damage based and how it operates, but of course the the damage doesn't need to be combat damaged. So yeah, we could have definitely done it that way. Uh, looks like we get Spark Reaper dismissal here though, which is a nice again two speller that will uh, pump the Drake.
That's pretty good. I'm going to send in with both flyers. Well, I guess we can just send in with the Thunder Drake and let him choose. I just think if we Thunder Drake and Silver Wing, we can just send in with everything. And... Maybe send in with these three, leave the token back, and see how they want to block and finish whatever they block. But also, yeah, we could probably attack with this and they're not going to block it, right? All right. The team, then. The team. We're going to blow up their flyer and present lethal. With the way they've been scrying, they need to draw something for the Thunder Drake because they haven't had it inherently. All right, they drew something for the Thunder Drake, but we're, st we're still presenting lethal. So yeah, looks like that didn't even matter. Magic is easy, I guess, till it's not. You, I feel like my win percentage is much higher in best of one, even though I would think it would be better in best of three. Maybe it does mean that better players are hanging out in best of three or something. I don't know. But we're rolling. Whatever, I'll take it. Don't like the four swamps, but I'm not going to throw this back. We'll keep. Apparently I'm that good or that lucky or chat is that helpful. Something, some combination of those things. Or even in the 5-1 bracket, you running, you face people playing the Grazer. You know, I just don't know. I'll say this, it ain't 0% chat. For all the concerns out there about... Uh, oh yeah, code incoming, right on. It's a race to enter the code. Free boosters on uh, Wat Watsy is helping me make it rain this week. Let's just dis finish her here. Well, now we have a dread horde we're trying to get to. I guess we got to dismiss this, uh, the token. Hey, Oni. Not the greatest use of this, but I want to keep our life total up. I want to stay on the ground and threaten on the ground, so I did it. Hey, Oni. Day's going well. Hey, Oni, I have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of codes to give away. Pre So noisy. Oh, you go away. All right, here we go. I'm going to whisper to you, Oni. This is a secret, secret link. Do not share. Do not share. But you, Valhallas, and Nick have this link to this spreadsheet, which has code links on it. And if you want to whisper one to a positive member of our community or throw one out like... Uh, Valhalla's did there just for kicks. Go for it. Falling a little behind here. But not too far. We're just going to have to 
Get a tithe bear giant down. Maybe they'll kill it. We want some stuff in the graveyard, actually, for this dread horde now. Red, text, or delete, doesn't matter to me. Just uh, make sure that nobody accidentally reuses them. You can just delete it if you want. Strike through, whatever. Uh, let's start with a giant. Thank you for the sub. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're holding back here, why, but... ourselves a globe or a planes now. Get rid of that Hydra. Now, I guess we uh, make Vraska and at least throw a Death Toucher out there. We can also get Kazmina and look for answers, but we'll start with Vraska. You see an assassin coming for you. That's a bad assassin. Do we want to play the land? Let's see, we have six. Uh, if we had seven mana next turn, it might matter to, like, Kazmina. Well, I guess the question is, do we want eight? Is there potential for eight next turn that matters? I don't think it does, so I'm going to hold this land right now in case we need to pitch it to Kazmina. But obviously the big problem here is a 9-9. Nine -nine. We are... Uh, a lot is riding on this assassin living... Make that a 10 10. No codes for gems, just for boosters. Do I have your attention now? Some say I never heard of you. Eddie Tex, thank you for the sub. All right, Wanderer. Well, sorry, it's as bad as the Wanderer's Strike in that we cannot really cast it right now. Thus, the splash penalty. We're paying a penalty for our splashing around, but uh, let's see. We can start discarding. Like, we could, uh, might have to play Kazmina, discard the Wanderer so that next turn we can command the Dread Horde, bring the Wanderer back, and kill the Hydra. I think we're way out of this one and don't have a lot of hope for coming back, but it starts with figuring out how to get rid of the Bioessence Hydra. So even though I don't quite have a plan for winning the game outright, uh, best to have at least have a plan towards solving your immediate problem, which is an 11-11. Uh, actually, maybe our immediate problem is the Flyers, since they're not attacking into the Death Toucher right now, but anyway, that's what is motivating this. Yeah, I guess we have to pitch the Wanderer. And I am going to play this. I think, actually, we want to pitch things to command back more than pitch land anyway. You can do whatever you want, Oni. I trust uh, Oni, Valhallis, and Nick... If you're creative and fun, you can give away packs however you think is is awesome. It's a beautiful day for chaos, isn't it? Yeah, fun stuff going on in Oppo's deck. We're we're struggling quite a bit. They're doing uh, base green, five color awesome. It looks like. Many. 
Yes, I think Oni's contest is now more interesting in this game than this game, but we'll see here. Hydra has trample. Yeah, well, they're not attacking with it, so I guess we just let all this happen and see what we want to command back. I will return with even more disciples. I don't know what Oppo's doing. I'm not counting. I'm not. I'm not going to count mana for Oppo. That's for sure. I think we're we're just dead though. But uh, for posterity, for. For the feels, we can do that. Let's see. Actually, wait. Cancel. Yeah, we're just totally dead. Yeah, Oppo's just playing with us, but, you know, they are they are giving us a chance to get back in it. I mean, we're not gonna, but they are not being as aggressive as I would be. Sure. Now let's do... And learn your true power. I'm gonna actually take out the Skydiver on the hopes that Oppo doesn't realize that Bioessence Hydra has Trample. It's kind of weak, but I don't know what else to do. I mean, we're dead in a million ways if they just apply their pressure, you know, leverage their advantage. I bow to no one. But if they're not interested in leveraging their advantage, we'll keep trying to take take this game. I know how to stop you. Oh, they figured it out. All right. Can't break my stride. I got five wins with this pile. I'm happy already. Apparently, Oni is running the hardest contest ever. Yeah, sometimes you lose despite your oppo playing the grazer. I don't know the question. What's the question? Question two, chat. You get one guess. What's my favorite planeswalker? I don't know that one. No. Um, I'm going to guess, though, uh, um, you seem to like mono red, so I'm going to go with uh, what's his name from Scars of Mirrodin, the mono red uh, looks at mountains planeswalker. What's his name? Koth. Koth. Koth of the Hammer is my is my guess. Rattleclaw, glad you made it down to the stream. Glad you enjoyed the appearances. All right, so I was close at least with Koth. That's good. <laughs> what does untapping a mountain look like in actual, you know, in world? I don't know. All right. Well, we're already happy with five. Let's see where it goes from here. DJ Haig. Hey, hey. That is funny. Koth's name is an acronym. It stands for Koth of the Hammer. I worked for a game company that made a proprietary game engine, which uh, was, uh, you know, basically just in house engine to run your game. And it was literally named the Riot Engine, R I O T. And it was called the Riot Engine because it stood for Riot is our technology. 
So they're. That was funny. All right, we'll keep this. Got some globe cycling to do. I'll run out of finisher for no value if Oppo doesn't do anything here. I don't mind. Protect the Wanderer, if nothing else. Maybe Oppo had nothing to do and was just letting it pass. Maybe they passed out at the keyboard. Maybe they ran to get the door. I don't know. Vaporkin, you're asking me if I'm developing a game? No, I'm not developing a game. I was talking about uh, a time in my game industry history in the mid-aughts. And I worked for... Surreal software from from like 2004 to 2008 or 9. Yeah, I worked on a game that never shipped called This Is Vegas. Anybody ever heard of This Is Vegas? Who's not in the game industry? I suppose people in the game industry might not even have heard of it, but it's pretty infamous in the game industry. This is Vegas is infinite. Uh, it's infamous in the game industry because it may be one of the most expensive games that never shipped. It was intended to ship as a GTA style action adventure game set in Las Vegas. And I was in charge of the. Uh, Those who lose, and me. I was in charge of the gambling design on that project. It was great. I had a great time. I did great work. Some of the best work I've done in the industry in terms of systems design and gameplay design was on that project, but it never shipped and probably cost Midway, who is the parent studio, I think, I think there's estimations between like 45 and $55 million were spent on that game and it never shipped. You're welcome, Wujo. Thanks, Wizards, for providing those. Oh, here, let's uh, let's get on with this. Don't want to give Oppo a chance to come back and make a game of this. I'd rather just take my free win that they seem willing to give. Oh, neat. I didn't know you knew Pat. He's great. I love Mr. Lippo. Looks like he's he was at Hidden Path and is now uh, leaving Hidden Path to go go indie on us, Nick. So that's cool. I'm I'm probably part of the team that said yes. Let's hire Pat. He seems great. So we probably hired him away from you. Uh, this was in, like I said, uh, 2004 to 2009 range. I'm not exactly sure when I started and when I finished, but it's in that range. Oh, I don't know if you're asking. I also don't know if people are asking Oni for Oni questions or me questions. So I may be taking Oni questions out of context and answering them for my my yammering here. Oh, 
I was putting such quality casino poker. I, let, um, I should I can tell you about some of my designs that never saw the light of day that are the things I'm somewhat uh, among the most prideful things I have in the game industry are things that never shipped. But my challenge, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll just soapbox it for a bit after this game because I feel like it. I guess I could soapbox it during this game with, with what Oppo is doing here. Looks like they came back. Uh, I guess we'll go with the Naga Eternal here over keeping up totally lost. Continue to play to the board and apply pressure. And I'll play that land out, and then we have uh, both of those next turn. Yeah, Oppo's not really doing much. I don't know where they're at, where their head's at here. I don't know what they're up to, but I'll offer them the Eternal. Yeah, whatever. See, this is why I rare draft. Clearly, your draft picks don't even actually matter. Sometimes you run good. All right, indulge me for a little aside here. I'm going to go into soapboxing mode for a moment because I want to tell you about my favorite... Um, among my favorite game designs that I ever... Game design work that I ever did. So I was working on This Is Vegas. It's a Grand Theft Auto style driving, fighting, adventure game set in Las Vegas. The kind of the elevator pitch, this was, we started working on it before the movie came out, but kind of your pitch for the game would be, uh, what was the, the Bachelor, uh, the, it wasn't called The Bachelor Party, um, the one with uh, the four guys in, in Vegas, for the with Mike Tyson was in it and everything. Um, they get tattooed. Hangover, thank you. Apologies for that. Hangover. So the idea of this game was it was gonna be hangover in video game form, right? And there were a bunch of different ways you can interact in the game. You could, uh, obviously there's resources and money. So in, in the game, you could drive and make money. You could fight and make money. You could party and make money. So you could actually go, there was a dancing game, so you could go to the club and dance. And uh, you could gamble and lose money. That was the problem. So all of these systems in the game had ways for you to increase your resources in the game through these activities. But we wanted authentic gambling. We wanted the gambling to be authentic in the game. And therefore, you lose money when you gamble in Las Vegas. So it was a problem that we had these systems that supported the player making money in the game, and then the gambling, which was authentic, but that meant you lost money. So it was my job to figure out what kind of sub-games we could lay over the gambling experience to turn the gambling into a profitable experience while still feeling authentic, while still feeling like real gambling. So the system I came up with that I was super proud of and happy with was a series of cheating mini games. And there were ways that you could cheat at each of the games we were offering, but it was, what I liked about it, it wasn't just a press button for free money. It was sub games that you had to think about how to play. So like, for example, the idea was you got, uh, uh, you had, you would acquire a pair of special glasses and um, an ink bottle uh, uh, that you could only see through your glasses. And the idea was you had a certain number of cards you could mark before you ran out of ink or they changed the decks. And so you would have to choose how you were going to mark cards. And in poker, you would choose, uh, you could only mark a card that showed up in your hand. 
And then uh, when that card showed up in new shuffles, you would see you could see who had that card at the table. And so there was this. I liked that it was uh, there was decisions to make in how you cheated, and it wasn't fail safe, and it ran out. Like eventually they would uh, they would replace the decks, and so you'd lose your your cheating. And for uh, craps. We were going to do um, actually a loaded dice game where you had to toss the, you know, there was a, a, a skill skill testing to toss the dice in a way that allowed you to manipulate them. And in blackjack, same thing. You could uh, you could mark cards in blackjack, and when they came through in the shoe, you would start to. Oh, and also blackjack had uh, card counting. There's automatic card counting if you wanted to do to do it that way. But it was really it was just neat to have this layer of cheating that was still a fun aspect of the game and it's still all the stuff all the strategy that you needed in blackjack was still true you just got this extra layer of information that you got to interact with and i was really really happy with that and it made for a fun 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 gambling in which you won money over time which was also nice but then here here was the my my maybe my greatest game video game innovation and never saw the light of day until effectively it kind of saw the light of day lately in um in this kind of speed poker the the poker rush rush poker that they've got going so one of the problems with authentic poker is that it's boring as hell if there are 10 people at the table you can expect to win one of every 10 hands and therefore you should be folding probably eight out of 10 of those hands and really only competing for the ones that you are a likely candidate to win. And so a big problem with video game poker, uh, you know, console poker or a poker versus AI is it is mind numbingly dull to play correctly. It's hard to stay disciplined enough to play correctly because it's just video game poker anyway. So you just play every hand and uh, so you, uh, uh, I was really, frustrated with that and love poker but was frustrated that i never wanted to play any video game poker because it was so torturous or so inauthentic so i but i, I came up with it so for those of you who don't know poker when you play poker uh most in in like texas hold'em style there's two players that are the blinds there's called the small blind and the big blind and those are effectively the, the ante for the pot those people are forced to seed the pot with some money so that there's something for everybody to win. Because if you didn't seed the pot with some money through forced action, everybody would just fold until they had the best hand possible, right? So you see, you seed the pot with a little bit of money. And that uh, penalizes you for just folding until you have a good hand. But what we did is we set a bar. Uh, I basically s defined what a uh, playable starting hand was. We had two settings, tight and loose. You could do loose uh, or tight starting hand selection. And basically, if you check those options, if you chose to go into that mode, it the game auto folds anything that's not a good hand. It's not that it's inauthentic. It's just that it's not even bothering to show you the hands that you know you should fold. And it skips to the good stuff. And if the blinds go through you, the game would automatically deduct that amount of money from your stack. And there were fail safes there as well. But the net feel was that Every time you you finished a hand and started a new one, you would get an amazing pair of cards. Oh, I got ace jack suited. Oh, I got a pair of sevens. Oh, I got a ace queen. You know, like you only played good, interesting, viable hands and just didn't even bother showing you the, the chaff that you're supposed to fold. And it felt like cheating, even though it wasn't. It was completely legit. You, we just skipped over the 12 hands and it would tell you how many you skipped too which would all was also neat it'd be like 13 hands skipped you wasted you you passed over 13 boring low power hands and got straight to your kings or whatever so uh anyway i loved that design i played my own poker game on my lunch breaks because it was so fun to just get good hand after good hand after good hand and know that it wasn't even actually cheating it was just an assistant to tap you on the shoulder when you had something playable so no this is uh mtg viz this was uh for pve this is for a, a grand theft auto style action adventure one player game oni long stories are why people come here right Maybe not, but thank you for indulging me. I don't get to talk about that too often. And 
The fact that that never shipped and saw the light of day is one of my great sadnesses of the game industry, but it's everybody's everybody in this industry has one of those stories. So there you go. Should we try and get somehow uh, seven wins with this deck? Yeah, here I can. Here's your here's your pack. Somehow we're playing for seven wins with a deck nobody liked, and I put par at two and a half on, so there you go. Swampler asks, did it move money between the computer players in an authentic way during the skips? Yeah, the AI played all the hands without you. You know, it it, it, it literally ran through the hands and was just decide whether the human sh should bother being in the hand or not. And if yes, show you the hand. If not, play the hand without them. Looks good. Yes, uh, we did have, uh, you could get caught, like, if, if you didn't uh, do it right, there was a possibility of getting caught uh, by security. We had a little cutscene and everything of security catching on to you. And then you'd have to flee the casino in a big, dramatic exit. Well, they played a two and we can't thirst it. That's too bad. And nothing to play on three either, which is also too bad. I'd probably start on the Silver Wing. If they don't add anything, we may start with Kazmina. If they add something that gives them an attack with Snare Spinner and whatever they play here, then we'll just follow with Silver Wing. Easy for you to say, Great God Ohm. You don't see what our sideboard is. Hell, we have a we have a Naga Eternal in this deck. Probably take the Kasmina, but maybe you have to take the command. Depends on what they're worried about. Although to be fair, Naga Eternal was not in our main deck for game one. Well, now we could thirst the token, but that seems unwise. I'd rather just drop a silver wing and see if we can't clog the board that way before Kazmina. And uh, we have no way to get this back from the yard, so we are trying the natural way. We have our, our best card, our most powerful card at the very least, is now gone for good in this game. Shang's okay here, but yeah, it makes Kesmina a little rough because they get a 3-5 next turn. Ooh. All right. Six wins is pretty good, though, huh? Six wins, not bad for this mess. I'm going to take this moment here to go ahead and Soren's Thirst the Dreadmalkin before it can start doing stuff. And then what could we draw? I guess if we drew like Erratic Visionary or Callous Dismissal or Globe, we could even have a two spell turn next turn. Our only other option is to Kazmina and Minus. That seems terrible. So yeah, we're going to do this. Science. 
Getting from bad to worse around here. Kind of have to... Kazmina and Minus, since we can't even wander or strike. Not even the slightest bit tilted. I'm so happy to be at six wins with this deck. It's unbelievable. And with a lot of sweet stuff they can get back with the Spellkeeper, that's going to be rough. We are, oh, we're 6-2. The other one won so quickly I forgot to update the record. We had that guy just kind of do nothing in our last win. Eh, help me remember this one when we go 1-3 and three with our stunningly good deck, you know? It just happens. Oppo. At least Oppo is giving us a lot of uh, a lot of meme value. Just out of spite, we'll do this and then scoop. All right. Wanted seven, of course. We always want seven, but heck. Six wins with this, uh, this messy deck. We'll take it. And that was off of the gold entry. So we're back again with healthy totals here. That's really the fundamental secret to playing for free on Arena, is just pacing yourself to take advantage of these gold of gold entries that then become extra gems for your future gem entry and we got a second extra pack it's true it's true go to soapbox here for a sec that johnny if i must 